following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. We are back. New York Mets baseball, past, present, future. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network on the first day of Pitchers and Catchers. Robert Cole and Marty Rose, the two co-hosts, are here, and um, I'm psyched. Marty first. How are you? Very good, Ralph. Very good. Can't wait for things to get going. Good. Robert, checking in. I'm still oiling up my glove. I'm ready to go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, What's the first thing that hits you about the Mets going into spring training? This time we'll start with you, Robert. Um, Optimism uh, and overall depth. Uh, I, you know, haven't seen a Mets team in the last several years that has overall depth, both in the projected major league roster and uh, in the minor leagues. And, you know, it just continues to keep happening. You know, they keep they continue guys. to get better in uh, along those regards. They just signed a kid named Espinosa. Yeah, Danny Espinosa. Uh, yeah, who's uh, definitely uh, a better bet than the old um, uh, shuttle that they had going a few years ago. Uh, this guy can come up and contribute and uh, I think that's the difference. Um, Marty, what do you? What stands out to you? Oh well, the uh, improvement all around. I mean, this, like like Robert said, the depth has been improved. Where when you go to the bench now, you're going to get a minor leaguer, a, a major leaguer, coming up instead of these minor league guys that used to go you know, up and down between AAA and the majors, they've they got, they got solid guys now to fill in at, at every position. And um, my, my impression, I, I don't know how um, this stands, there are really no jobs open. Am I correct? Is, does Alonzo still have a chance um, – to break through, say he has a, a terrific spring training. Do you think they'd uh, he could push the envelope enough to force the issue? I, I think so. Uh, why not? Uh, they they don't have a lot of options at first base. Um, well, I think Fraser uh, may be the starting first baseman if Alonzo uh, either. A doesn't make it, or B they decide to keep him down for that amount of time to get the extra year, you know. Um, so I, I I I think first base is the only uh, position where you have that that situation. Everything else uh, seems to be covered. Okay. Uh, would you guys tell me about what you think of McNeil's role? And I will start by saying that McNeil had more hits in any one month in September than any Met rookie in history. Now, um, you could look at that in two ways, but I think he had like, um, I don't remember the number it was, um, a goodly amount of hits for for September, and um, he's got uh, some versatility. Where do you think he fits in, Robert? Oh, I, I think he's uh, he's slotted to be a Ben Zobris type player. Um, he'll play a little first, play some second, third, corner outfield. Um, the Mets actually have two of those type guys now that they made that trade and they picked up J.D. Davis. Uh, mm-hmm. J.D. Davis is a very similar type player. Now, J.D. Davis and or McNeil could take over first base as well. Um, I, I think differently than Marty. I don't think Alonzo is going to make the opening day roster for several reasons. 
One is to keep the pressure off of him. Um, another is to, of course, keep the clock from starting. You keep him down in the minors a couple of weeks. He tears it up down there. You can always bring him up. So I think that's more likely what we're going to see. Um, and they'll they'll see what you know what transpires with you know what they have right now for first. But I, I'm guessing. And we'll see how he responds first. to going down and. Um, and who's um, how people are playing while he's up, while he's down there? Um, oh, maybe Fraser yes. can bounce back, and I'm thinking Fraser uh, is still young enough to bounce back and have a hell of a year. Oh, absolutely. But but you have you know right now you're counting on Jed Lowry as being your third baseman. Mm-hmm. Well, if he slumps. And Frazier starts off well. Frazier can move over to third. And then you can bring Alonzo up. I, I just like all the different options they have. You know, I, I haven't seen a Mets team so versatile uh, geez, since I can remember. You know, I mean, they have guys they can plug into different positions. They're not just set in one spot. And that that's exciting. Right. Now, I, I, um, I think McNeil, McNeil is going to be uh, – transition to the outfield, and I think it's going to hurt his uh, playing time. So I don't think he's going to play much infield at all. From what I heard the last time I heard uh, uh, the GM speak, which was earlier today. So, um, yeah, McNeil is going to be fighting for playing time because uh, they've got a lot, of, a lot of guys that can play the infield now. Next question, guys, because you're the experts, uh, Conforto. Uh, it, let's just take an over and under number of the number of home runs he hit last year. Uh, I think there was 29, if I'm not mistaken, nine of which came in September, or a bunch in September. Um, what do you say an over and under start with Mert? Well, uh, obviously, the beginning of last year, he was still hurt. I think, you know, it was, that was pretty obvious, especially the way he came on late in the season. So uh, I think you've you got to expect at least 30 if he was close to that last year and he wasn't healthy most of the time. Okay. How about you, Robert? Well, I, I would like to think 30. I mean, as far as an over and under number, I would go with 25. I'd be happy with uh, anything over 25. And then uh, his RBIs being around 100, 85 to 100, I would be satisfied with that. Okay. Now, here's a, almost a trick question. Of the two, who will be missed more, Flores or Bruce? Start with you, Marty. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, I, I would have to say uh, Flores was a guy that really knew his spot, knew his position, and coming off the bench had a mindset that he could handle it, and he, he was great at it. So I I don't know how many guys can do what he did coming off the bench. Uh, with with Bruce, you know, he was he wasn't really healthy a lot of the time, a lot of the time, and um, I don't know how many home runs Nimmo can hit, but um, you know he's going to be the leadoff guy with his 400 on base percentage. But uh, I think Nimmo will improve. Uh, his home run total as well. But I think, to answer your question, I think Flores will be missed. Okay. Uh, How about you with the same question, Robert Cole? I agree. I think, uh, you know, of the two who's going to be missed the most, Flores. uh, Flores was uh, able to come up in key situations and pinch hit. Um, You know, uh, Bruce brought some veteran leadership, but, that's been replaced, so I don't think that's going to be as important. I think Bruce is going to have a big year this year. Um, I really do. 
uh, is, is going to have very little pressure. He seems to do well, you know, in, the, in a lower pressure situation. Did well in Cincinnati. He did well when he was over in Cleveland. Um, I think the expectations. Hey, uh, let's not take anything away from him. When he was healthy, he did well with the Mets. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But um, you know, there's, there'll be less pressure on him to stay healthy. Really, you know, I mean, he, he just go out and do his thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think Flores will be the most missed out of the two. Okay. Um. Let's get to the catching. Uh, one of you, in our little communication during the week, and we talk about this, believe it or not, uh, if you're listening out there on an ongoing basis, mentioned that both catchers are almost bound to get hurt. Wilson and uh, Pilecki. Wilson Ramos, Ramos and Darno. Darno. Darno, or, um, why do you say that with Wilson? You watched him longer um, than any of us because uh, he was in St. Petersburg. What um, are his injuries uh, chronic? Are they leg injuries? Or the, the, what's what's his situation? Is there? I guess what I'm asking is. Um, with luck, is there a chance that he could stay healthy all year? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, his injury in uh, Washington, he tore up his knee. And um, he, re, you know, was out a whole year and really didn't play much for the Rays in his first year with the Rays. But last year, he was healthy to start the year, played very well. Like I told you, I think, a couple of shows back, Ralph, He's a very heavy-legged catcher, you know, big, strong guy. And um, he had some leg problems last year. Um, I don't believe they're chronic. I, I don't recall him having them with Washington. It may have just been, you know, last year he was finally playing every day again after not playing every day for a couple of years, and that may have been one of the problems as well. But I don't think he has anything chronic. Okay. Is he the kind of guy that they've ever thought about um, to give him an off day from catching, maybe move him over to first base? Oh, yes. In fact, he, he played first base for both Washington and for the Rays a little bit last year. So he most definitely uh-huh. can play first base, yes. That's a, that's a biggie right there. Um, um, I like that. All right. Um, We've been on the positive. What's negative? Start with you, Marty. Um, well, uh, it's hard to see uh, anything negative to start the year off. I mean, uh, there's been a, a major improvement on the on the 25-man roster. Uh, everything looks positive. The bullpen's been improved. The starters are, are healthy. Um, I really, I really don't see anything. Uh, I, I just, you know, if the first base uh, situation gets solved at a reasonably uh, early part of the year, I don't see anything that could hurt them or maybe Rosario going down he'd be um he'd be the Lowry, one Lowry played some short yes no. Lowry's a good ball player I was wrong I think once I mentioned that he hit something like 320 or whatever he didn't but if you look at the number of RBIs he he racked up last year with Oakland well, well he could be the starting third baseman if, if Fraser's at first because right. I heard uh I heard uh, the GM today, and he said Lowry's our second batter. He's in, Lowry's going to bat second, so it yes. sounds like Lowry's in there every going to be in there every day. Yeah, you Lowry guys are going to like starter third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would take him, and um, you know, even if Alonzo Alonzo starts out in the minors, it still puts the Mets in a position of being deep. 
by having McNeil coming off the bench. So um, they are indeed deeper. Now, uh, Robert, do you find anything negative before I make um, make my bid for something? Um, if you don't find anything negative, Robert, with what's going on, then may I say that there would be no better time with the team being the way it is and there's always a short envelope with the pitching staff we are going to have to sign five guys somewhere along the line or at least make them happy could they and with the dropping price of free agents and the only real weakness I can see is the chance of Lagaris not staying healthy in center field. What if they sign Bryce Harper? Would that not be an investment rather than expenditure for the Mets? You dream yeah, well, about it. Let's start with you. <laughs> okay. Here, or is this just, am I just Don Quixote? Uh, going for windmills here, uh, is this just never going to happen? Or why? I mean, does it not make sense to find that that final piece which will make them the team to beat for the war in baseball? All right. First of all, I think you've been you're smoking some real good shit, Ralph. So <laughs> I am. I am that. You, you got to give me credit. I've I've kept that pretty steady for a long time. <laughs> okay. He, here's the thing. Okay. The Giants are very interested in Bryce Harper. Okay. They said money is no object. It's the length of the contract. Okay. Other teams have said the same thing. Okay. It's not money that's the object. Okay. If, if Bryce Harper wants $25 million a year, there's teams willing to give it to him. If Bryce Harper wants $30 million a year, there's teams willing to give it to him, okay? But they only want to give it to him for a three or four max five-year contract, okay? He and his agent are insisting on a 10-year contract still. That's not going to happen, okay? Nor should it happen. I, I would be enraged to hear that the Mets gave him a 10-year contract, okay? Because we'd be happy for three or four years, but what about after that? And that's where this is all coming down right now. It's not the money. Okay, Machado and Harper could already have their money. It's length of contract. Okay, Marty. Yeah, hundred um, percent. There, there is like zero chance that the Mets are signing Harper or Machado. Zero chance. So. Um, okay. I, it's not. Don't even bring it up. It's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. The, the only way I could see that happening, Ralph, is that at the last second, all of a sudden, you know, their agents are looking for, you know, one of those pillow deals, you know, soft landing one year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then fine. You wanna you wanna throw a thirty million dollar one year deal at them? Absolutely, do it. But you know, I don't see that happening. Okay, well, I know Washington has $30 million on the table. Yeah. Uh, the, the Giants also said they have no problem giving the money that's being asked. Okay. It all comes down to length of contract. Okay, so you would say that uh, you have no trouble giving $30 million of Will Pond's money if it were for, like, three years. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. I agree with I agree with that, Ralph. For sure. Good. Now, how, how about would you say the same thing about Machado? Um, in, given in the way the they're formulated right now, and um, I mean, in the Mets, the shortstop, no. Machado is um, is probably a better third baseman than he would be a, a shortstop. But he's got a head where he wants to be the, the shortstop. Correct. And uh, so would you give, if you're the Mets, would you take on Machado for a couple of three years at the at 
say the same thirty million. I wouldn't. Yeah, I I, I would. I would. I mean, you you can always move things around. Again, uh, you know, Machado is certainly at this at this moment better than Rosario. Um, so yeah, if, if that. If, if he was available for three years at $30 million, yes, I, I would say. Okay, yes. I heard, though, I wouldn't in Mert's voice. Is that I wouldn't because I don't want to root for the punk, and I'm putting that in. I'm not <laughs> saying those are okay. your words. I don't particularly cause... like him, no. Yeah, okay. I don't particularly okay. like him. But <laughs> I think you got to give Rosario a chance to improve, and I think he will. I want him out there every day, and I know that uh, Machado doesn't want to play third. He wants to play short. Now, if he would agree to play third, maybe that's a different story. That would solve your third and your first base uh, problem, and you could, you know, leave Alonzo down there to to get more seasoning. But again, it's it's not going to happen. <laughs> Just okay, I'm going to add a little dimension to the interest. This is hypothetical, of course, because he's not up for free agency. But if Trout were looking for the same long-term deal, would you give Trout a long-term deal? Hardy. Uh, me? Uh, I, I think he's even older, isn't he? Isn't he he's old? older, but uh, yeah. no, that uh, older not or giving, not, I'm not um, giving anybody. Look at those. Look contract. at the numbers he's put. He's not much older. I think he's 28, if I'm not mistaken, and that's right in the prime of it. He's a free agent next year. Okay. But my point is, um, look at his numbers. That his consistent numbers. He's I, put up. Um, I, I don't think you're going to see anybody get a 10-year contract ever again. No. Okay, no, which means that know. there's going to be some haggling with the player agreement, uh, when the agreement between management and the players come up in the very near future. Am I right about that? Yeah, I think you're right about that, but I think the players would be wrong, okay? The money is there, okay? The money is there, but it's length of contract. Now, right. so you, you, you take a little bit more money in less years, and, and I think teams will do that. That's what they're trying to do right now. You know, we had this talk last week on uh, the Brooklyn Dodger podcast. You know, I was asked, did, did I think there was collusion? I said, That, no, that was going to be my next question to you guys. Okay, I do Please not answer. think there's collusion. I think owners have finally become aware of what they've done to themselves, shooting themselves in the foot all these years, and uh, you know they've finally gotten some sense. And I don't think you can prove collusion if the money is there. Okay, and the money is there. You know, the, you know the legal thing of collusion is everyone has to get together and make an agreement together. Okay. Not just, you know, thinking, well, you know, I, I think this guy's going to do it, so maybe I'll do it. It has to be a conscious agreement with everybody. I don't think you But it's not like the, that's uh, – baseball hasn't been busted on that once before. Well, they have been, but for different reasons. I mean, right now, okay, you, you're talking about length of contract. I don't think you can prove collusion on that. You know, the money's there. They're not saying – Okay, no one should get more than $20 million. That, that's not what's being said. And, you know, it's, you know, each team is making the decision. It's crazy to give a 10-year contract. You know, I mean, look at Pujols. Look at uh, A-Rod. Look at those, you know, those 10-year contracts. I don't think anyone should get 10-year contracts anymore. I think five years should be the tops. Okay. Um Player Association is still going to put up a hell of a stink on that. Yes, and the well, Player Association will put themselves in position to get some consent, uh, you know, 
some other things that they can get if they want. Like the DH in the National League. I'll bet that's part of it. That'll happen. That will sure. happen. Pretty I think yeah. that, and I think the Player Association could go after, say, a 26, 7, or 8-man roster, which would allow you know a couple more guys on every team to be in the major leagues. I think that's feasible. That's probably should be should happen anyway. You know that. And you, they could go for carrying a bunch of players uh, more than 26, maybe 28 or 29, and having a uh, like hockey has. You dress X number of guys, and um, some guys are you know do not play. Did not play because this, that, or the other thing. Where the, you can choose yes. from. I okay. okay. I actually you understand what I'm in, saying. I actually sent in a suggestion, Ralph, along those lines. I said a 28 to 30 man roster, 25 men active for every game. Okay, 10 pitcher maximum active for for any game. Okay, and on this extra roster, you could only count you know, carry two extra pitchers, okay? So every every game, your yesterday starting pitcher and your tomorrow starting pitcher wouldn't have to be counted on that 10-man, you know, pitching staff. And, so and a player a could get pension time for when he's active. Correct. They, they'd be part of the, um, the active roster, but only 25 could dress. Just like in hockey, I think it's, 16 can dress. Right. You wouldn't accumulate a, a day of pension time unless you were active. And um, that would, would be active. Uh, I mean, and you might even, they might even have it with a split contract where you're, um, you've got a minor league contract on the day, days you're not active and a major league contract on the days you are. Yeah, well, well, hockey has that. They call them two-way contracts. You get oh, I contracts. didn't know that. Okay. Then that, um, they're good. two-way contracts. You get paid the major league uh, salary when you're in the majors, and you get the minor league salary when you're in the minors. Yeah. And I am trusting that baseball will not shoot itself in the foot and not be able to come up with some sort of an agreement that doesn't extend to a walkout or a strike. A lockout or a strike. Uh, the players would be shooting themselves in the foot if they went on strike because they'd never make back the money they're going to lose if they go out with, right. with the lack of the long-term contracts. It wouldn't, wouldn't be smart at all, but... The things you just spoke about, though, are good uh, negotiating tools, you know, to, to, with this uh, additional roster and this other stuff. That's that's that, that, that's can, good for uh, future negotiations, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad we're making sense. Let's see if they make sense, too. <laughs> right. I have more trust in what we could come up with as a solution, the three of us, basically – more trust in what the two of you can can come up with as a solution than I do w with uh, not just any big business. Um, big business, government, whatever it is, they're going to screw it up. <laughs> Some way, somehow, they're going to screw it up. And um, yep. let's hope they screw it up less than the last regime, uh, the commissioner. Oh, but stupid? You. Yeah. Pud Seelig. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Seelig. I always call him stupid. But, uh, <laughs> or even better, Pud Stupid. How about that? That's <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, we came up, we did a little negotiating on the name, and we came up with a solution. It was, it's easy if you can talk and, uh, you know, have common sense. Pud Stupid. Oh, well, there, there, you, there you go, Ralph. Okay. Talk, number one, communication. Okay. Right. Common sense. And for some reason... Right. And not just talk. Have the other person listen. Yes. <laughs> the, the two C words. Um, communication, okay, and common sense. And common sense. 
Well, I'll tell you what. Wouldn't it be great if one of you were the head commissioner and the other of you and oh here's another interesting question if I could make one of you commissioner and the <laughs> other one fill the role of Marvin Miller which one which job would you like best Marty Rose <laughs> uh, well I think uh, being Marvin Miller would be <laughs> A little uh, less stressful to me, you know. When okay. I'm having to make, you know, I, I'd take that one. All right. Um, you got it because you uh, <laughs> you, got, you got 60 years of tenure in, in this thing. So, I, Robert, you have to understand, I awarded him that without <laughs> a, out any thought. Second base. Oh, no problem. I'll, second I'll, grade, Mert. I'll be the king. Uh, I'll be the king. Um, I'm okay with the king. <laughs> which job? Which um, which job would you prefer? It's not a right or wrong, Robert. Actually, I I, I would prefer commissioner. Okay, I would okay. prefer commissioner, um, because you're able to put put forth ideas. Uh, you know, the new commissioner, you know, he's trying. At least he's putting ideas together. He's you know, floating some different things. Some of the things I, I think are off base, such as, you know, extra innings having a runner at second base and two outs. I mean, we used to oh, God, I hate that. Three hitter no. minimum? That's like, hard. Three hitter minimum. Oh, I, I think, again, you, know, you want to limit pitching, you limit the amount of active pitchers you can have on any given day. I wholeheartedly uh, concur. If you only had 12 pitchers on a roster, it would give it'd be a lot more fun. Guys coming off the bench, um, and it would solve that problem because you couldn't pitch 12. You couldn't have guys pitching every day and just go with 12 guys and limit the amount of time they have to. Um, they're up or. You know, if you option a guy, you can't bring him up for a certain amount of time. Uh, they can control it that that way very easily. I mean, How about controlling the... the shift? Now, I've talked to um, Michael Duca um, on the Giant Show about this. Michael is an official scorer with um, Major League Baseball, and he talks about the possibility of um, them limiting the amount of players on each side of the field. And um, would you be for, be for that, Marty? Um, no. I, uh, well, I mean, you're not going to have four guys on one side. I mean, I've seen, you see three guys on one side all the time now. Uh, right. Well, if I mean, I'm league, talking about two guys on each side. Well, I, if, look, if a major league hitter cannot uh, hit hit to the opposite field, then it's uh, his problem. Uh, they should be able to defend the way they want to defend, in my opinion. Okay, Robert, on that issue. Okay, I, I agree with Marty. Um, they have it within their ability to change it. I mean. I, I used to scream at some of the players when I go to the trop, you know, uh, Carlos uh, Pena, for instance. Okay, all he had to do was drop a couple of bunts, which he did once in a while. Okay, and they they would start shifting over there. You know, I, I know the sabermetrics guys say, well, they want you to bunt because then you're only going to get on first base, but there's a possibility he can hit a home run, and then he goes all around the bases. So why would you want to, you know, bunt? Well, if you bunt enough times and you get enough guys on base, the other team is going to get smart enough and they're going to make the shift. Look what's happening now with this launch angle stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. What have pitchers and teams started to do? They started throwing high fastballs, okay? Well, that's curing it, okay? You want to get under the ball? Well, try to, try to get under a high fastball. You can't do it. So if you start slapping the ball consistently, into that open territory, sooner or later, they're going to have to shift back over that way. You know, to me, it's a very simple 
thing. You know, I mean, don't start messing, you know, with the rules and stuff. Leave it up to the players. Okay. I'd be crushed if the DH comes in and if and when, uh, let's put it that way, or when and if. Um, I think it takes an awful lot away from the game strategically. Should you take the pitcher out, who are you bringing in, that sort of thing. I... Um, I just, uh, I think it limits the game. And I watch both the American League and the National League. I'm grateful to have an American League team to watch. Um, So I'm not complaining, but it really isn't the same to me. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. No, Ralph, if if they want to keep having two different sets of rules, then I think they've got to eliminate the interleague play because it's not fair to have American League pitchers hit in the National League parks when they hardly ever get a chance to hit, and may some of them may have never hit in their entire minor league career. And it's more of a chance for them to get hurt running the bases, which we've seen a couple of times. Right. Very good point. Right. Um that there's another rule in league play. I couldn't understand that one. It takes away from the suspense of the matchup at the end of the year. We remember as kids how it was when the Dodgers played the Yankees, or sure. the Dodgers played the Yankees, or the Yankees played the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and every now and again, the Giants would sneak in there. But um, that. That was all part of it. You never saw these guys play each other until the end of the year or early on in spring training. Um, right. I well, missed the game the way it was. I'm not, this was I, all. Okay, this was all uh, the what I call the Walmartization of baseball by Bud Selig. Okay, You're, you, all three of us are old enough to remember two separate leagues, two separate league presidents, two separate sets of umpires. Two separate right, baseballs. with an outside chest protector and an inside right. chest protector, <laughs> which meant you were getting the high ball or whatever. Right. Um, two that, separate leagues. That made it interesting. Okay. Yep, two separate leagues with the commissioner overseeing both leagues. Okay, they've now Walmart Walmartized everything. All the umpires are together. You know, everything is the same. The only difference right now is the DH. You know, and uh, I'm all for not having the DH. I mean, I've argued against the DH for years, okay? But something has to happen because at at some point you have to have both the same. Because right now... And you're not going to take back the DH from the American no. League. And right now That's... the National League is the only league anywhere, high school, college, little league, that doesn't have the DH. So, I mean, yeah. there, therein lies the problem because a lot, a lot of guy, you know, boys when they're growing up, they're now being told you don't have to worry about hitting. You're a good pitcher. You're not, not so good a hitter. Forget hitting. Just pitch. And that's what happens now. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean I have to like it. No, but. and I don't, but I, I do think it has to be the same. And okay. like I, like you just said, they're not going to give it back. You know, you're not going to give right. back the DH in the one league. So you're going to have to, you know, bite the bullet in the other side. Okay. You know what I like about this show? We established our roles. Robert is the commissioner and Mert <laughs> playing the role of Marvin Miller. There you go. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to give you, I'm not going to make you the commissioner playing the role of Pud Stupid. You'll be, <laughs> you pick a commissioner. Um, what commissioner did you, was there a commissioner that you thought did a damn good job? Fee Vincent or Giamatti? Um, uh, unfortunately, they've all been tools. Okay, I mean, uh, Judge Landis was a tool. I mean, he was a bigot. He was a racist, okay? Mm. Um, so I, I can't see him at all. But then you had Ford Frick. Ford Frick was 
was a tool. You know, they, they, they've all really been just tools. But they had a little more power, you know, to oversee things. But uh, I, I really wouldn't want to be any one of them. I'd have to be my own man, Ralph. Oh, good, good. Get the power back. Right. And and you both have my support on the ra- on the radio network, by the way. So you'll know. Never- <laughs> I am a silly man. I enjoy this show, guys. Thank you very much. This was fun. And uh, our first day first day is spring training, even if it's just pitches and catches. You know what we have to root for? Every day is spring training. No one gets hurt. I don't give exactly. a damn right. wins. I don't give no injuries. That's that's the key. Absolutely. And wouldn't it be great if the odds catch up? We've had for the last three years such incredibly bad luck with injuries. And you know what? We haven't even talked about. Can you imagine if Cespedes comes back healthy in July or August? And um, yeah, he could boost that. He it's could, and that would yeah. that would be a, a terrific boost right there. But what we, so, uh, we don't want to even mention that. Okay, that has to be like a a Christmas present for us. Okay, don't okay. count on them. Don't count on them. And then all of a sudden, it'd be like you know two years, three years ago when they got him in that you know trade. Okay. Mm-hmm. That would be great, you know, have him come Straight out. Great you know, deadline of, deal, yeah, that, that would be very good. Yeah, you know, full of fire and, you know, full of machismo, you know, the way he was a couple of years ago. That would be wonderful, but yeah. don't count on it. Hey, let's uh, take a second and thank the Wilpons for um, showing some aggression and uh, going in a different direction. How about that? Oh, for sure. Uh, what direction is that, Ralph? <laughs> Well, yep. that's uh, when you uh, spend a little bit of money and take some chances and um, come up with a GM who seems to be innovative. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I'm waiting to see, you know, when he gets has to start talking to some of these guys about length of contract. You know, he really didn't have that problem with the Mets this year, but, mm-hmm. you know, Okay, uh, DeGrom's going to be up for contract soon. Syndergaard's going to be up for contract soon. You know, uh, how, how is he Hey, that's what that? I say. With such a small window, that's why I dream about Harper is all. Because I know that uh, they're in a position of having a closer, having Familia back. We haven't even talked about that. Um there's reason for optimism, and um, like I say, in the first day of spring training, we're always supposed to feel good, but it was forced upon. Feeling good always seemed, as a Met fan, in going into spring training, well, yeah, 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 it's the first year, it's year. everybody has a 0-0 zero, zero record. I'm not thinking along those terms. I'm thinking along the terms of the only thing that can screw it up is health, yeah. or lack thereof. Hey, Ralph, if you'll talk to Marvin Miller about, you know, telling Harper to take a three-year contract, I'll okay it. I'll I'll have uh, (laughs) – get right on there. I'll have a seance with the man about having you assume his responsibilities. I'll introduce you through a seance, and then you're going to have to carry it out from there, Robert. Sounds good to me. All right. Good deal. Sure. All right. Um Thank you guys for playing fantasy uh, baseball. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It, Very good. It's better Enjoyed than it. roto ball. What we play is better than roto ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Week. You too, and we'll see you next week. Stay healthy, both of you. Thank you Thank for you. listening, everybody. Comfortably Zoned Radio, the best Met podcast on the Internet. I say that. And I mean it. Robert Cole, Marty Rose, I'm Ralph Tycho, the weak link of it all. Adios, everybody. Good night. Good night.
The preceding was a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you for listening.